Yeah, okay.
Hello and welcome into Chessa Field right along the Hocking River in beautiful Athens, Ohio. For today's Battle of the Bricks, Ohio taking on Miami in their return home to Chessa Field. They haven't played here since the 2nd of September. It's been three weeks just about exactly, almost four, Connor Mills. Hi, I'm joined by Connor Mills. My name is Noah Wolf. It's a pleasure to have you with us on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Right around 70 degrees is the temperature as we get set for game time. Let's go through those starting lineups, shall we, Connor? Starting in goal today for your Bobcats, Sidney Malum, the sophomore from Nashville. And the Bobcats playing six listed defenders, probably not going to play six defenders in the formation, but nevertheless, they have six people rostered in that position. Starting the game today, Mandy Arnzen is one of them. She started all 10 games along with Rihanna Reese in that starting lineup as well. Olivia Sensky starts today, Maria Kalika as well, Michelle Rocky, and Victoria Breeden make up the core defense for Ohio. Then two midfielders, Olivia Molesky and Maddie Kay, and as always, your two forwards, Abby Townsend alongside Sydney Leckie at the top for the Bobcats. Meanwhile, for Miami, Patricia Katulis starts today as she has all of this season and all of last season as well. Jordan King, a midfielder, as plays alongside Chloe Macis, Kirsten Phelan, and Emily Roberts in what is anticipated to be that back four for Miami. Looks like they'll be in a 4-3-3 with three natural midfielders listed. Olivia Winnett, Desiree Grubbs, and Lauren Albrecht in that starting lineup. And then up top, Bianca Bonancic, Christina DeMarco, and Lida Bogdanovich. Both teams have taken the field. We are just about ready to get this one underway. Ohio comes into this one three and five and one overall, one and one in conference. Miami sitting one game worse off, two and six and one. Oh and two in the Mid-American Conference play. Losing a home series this past weekend to Bowling Green and Toledo was Miami. Meanwhile, in the Bobcats' first conference play, they traveled and played a couple directional Michigan schools, losing to Central Michigan in double overtime last Friday, but then coming away with the win at Eastern Michigan, 2-1. to one. And I'm uh, really excited to get a look at this Ohio team. For me, it's my first broadcast on here with you, and I haven't really seen these girls play since Marshall on September 2nd, where they won 3-1, to one. so really excited to dive in and looking forward to get into this game. Yeah, I think the fans are excited to see them back here at Chesa Field. That's the last time that they got to play at home was against the Marshall Thundering Herd. A really actually impressive three to one victory that was. Miami takes the opening kick and they will start off attacking. Controlled well by Ohio. Miami attempting to attack down that left wing. This is King, she'll square it in the middle for Macis. Very ambitious attack from Miami right off the opening kickoff. And that's pretty well anticipated as, like I said, they're starting more forward than they do normally. They have three forwards in their lineup and three midfielders with just a back four. Normally, they have some more help in defense today, trying to switch things up and score more goals. That's something that Miami has struggled with so far this season. Eight goals in their nine games this year. Although they've certainly had trouble keeping their opponents out of the goal as well, giving up 16 goals in nine games. So really offensively and defensively, a lot to work on early on in this season for the Red Hawks. There's always room for improvement no matter what point of the season you're in. And for them right now, it's on both sides of the ball. Miami, though, does already have two victories, which matches their season total from last year. Last year, they went 2-15-1. and 15 and one. Both of those wins came in MAC play. This year, they already matched that total, 2-6-1. and, six and one. Ohio will get the ball back here after an offside penalty on Miami. Courtney Sermons, in her first year as head coach of the Red Hawks, a 2008 graduate of Dayton, one of the younger head coaches in the Mid-American Conference. Allen comes forward to take the free kick and we may get to see Ohio have a true chance to attack for the first time today. Sensky attempts to control, but loses out. 
This is Kalika. And now right back to Miami. Just a nice deal from Chloe Macis right there, being able to have Miami drive down the field. And now they're in the box, but there will be offside called. Looked like a good attempt for Bogdanovich, but she was just on the wrong side of the last defender for Ohio. They catch a break there. That would have been almost a sure goal. She was in a great position in the middle of that 18-yard box. Now Malum will kick off. Bogdanovich controls, lays down the right side for Winnett. Excuse me, this is Medancic. But she is stripped of the ball by Victoria Breeden. Now it comes forward for Ohio. They'll take a throw in. Molesky has it, she takes it quickly. This is Molesky trying to get some space. Instead, we'll earn another throw in. Trying to charge forward, they'll have to send it back now to Rocky. Rocky looks down the left side. Sensky sends it in, but it's right at the goalkeeper, Katulis. No trouble for her. I don't know that that was necessarily intended to be a shot from Sensky down the left side. I think she was more looking to cross the ball in than anything else. She's got too much of it. Be a Miami throw after that ball is off the foot of Sensky. And going back to Miami's goalkeeper, Katulis, 47 saves coming into today, a save percentage of 746. So she's been doing her best to try to keep the Red Hawks in a lot of these games and really giving them an opportunity to go in and win. Yeah, she's been the number one goalkeeper option for Miami since her junior year. Last year she played every minute of every game and she's on track to do the same so far this year. Charging forward is Molesky. She's got some room down the right side. Cross in, is that a play? It'll be a goal kick. Katulis was named second team All-Mac last season for her efforts, even with the last place Red Hawks. She had a save percentage of 7.58. It's pretty spectacular. They did let in a record high number of goals for their team last season. But Katulis did the best she could and was recognized for her efforts with a place on that second All-Mac team. Malum keeps the Bobcats out of trouble, but not for long. Molesky plays this one forward. Kay charging down the right side. She uses her head but Miami will take back control. Some nice passes by Ohio, but just couldn't really find it at the end. They'll go back through Malum. Malum will attempt to play down the right wing for Arnzen. Arnzen finds Breeden. This is Kay. Across the middle for Sensky. Now Ohio flips the field. Finding Reese down the left side. That one played just to the wrong side of Abby Townsend. And the attack stalls. Now going the other way is Miami. This is Medancic. She'll play it back. But Ansic will have to chase that one down, but she won't get there as it trickles out of play. Ohio throw. Not a lot of midfield battle going on in this one. Seems like this game is being played very much in the attacking thirds for both sides. Here's Bagdanovich. Good sliding tackle by Mandy Arnson. And Ohio is able to clear. That was an immense tackle by Arnson. Perfectly timed, and now Ohio's going the other way. 
Lucky crosses for Kay. Kay will find it on the edge of the area. Kay finds some room for herself, takes the shot, it's saved. Nice job from Kay, really good footwork there, and just a shot didn't find the back of the net, but a lot of good signs here for the Bobcats early. Easy save in the end for Catullus, hit basically straight at her. And now Catullus threw that one a little bit in front of her. Olivia Molesky thought she had a chance at the ball, trying to catch Catullus off guard. It was maybe a split second from doing so there, Connor Mills. Yes, she was. Miami trying to attack down that right wing for them. Rihanna Reese gets there and punches it out of play. Miami now has the chance to set up their attack. Kirsten Phelan will take the throw. This is Wynette. Her cross goes off a bobcat and we will have the first corner of this ball game. Looks like Jordan King rushing over to take it. Ohio with a defender at each post. And Malum in the middle of that goal. Miami sending most numbers forward safe for two players that are not in that penalty area. Corner is cleared by Ohio. But Miami will take keep control, excuse me, as Albrecht has it. Yeah, that corner kick was just outside of the little circle there in Ohio, jumping all over it when they saw it was a little bit wide. Now Miami trying to attack. Can she get there before it goes out of play? She does not, according to the line judge. About 10 minutes gone in this first half, still a scoreless game between Ohio and Miami. One shot on goal for the Bobcats, none for Miami. The Red Hawks have had one corner kick so far, but nothing has come of it. Bogdanovich can't keep control, and Ohio will clear it right back to Chloe Maces of the Red Hawks. Challenge from Sensky almost wins the ball back for Ohio. Now down the right side, excuse me, the left side will be Medancic. But both Breeden and Arns in there to clear. Medancic wins it back. Bogdanovich in a good position, tries to square to the middle, and her teammate is unable to come up with the ball. And now Ohio will try to attack. Down the left side. Flicked on for Kay. Kay can't keep it, though. Good challenge by Lauren Albrecht. And now Bogdanovich squares to the left side. This is Medancic again. To the middle for Roberts. Now over to the wing, it's Phelan. Good cross in, but only as far as Michelle Rocky. And Rocky avoids the corner kick. It's still a Miami throw, however. Good position for Kirsten Phelan and the Red Hawks. Before that, though, we will see a Miami sub. And really, for these last couple ten minutes, Miami has been going on Ohio's side of the field, kind of keeping the pressure on. Ohio had a couple times where they've crossed midfield, but Miami just really doing a good job keeping the pressure on the Bobcats. So Spinell in the game in place of Christina DeMarco. And the Miami throw ends up not helping them at all. Here comes Ohio down the left wing, charging forward. But they're unable to keep it in play. Yeah, Connor, I'd say this game has mostly been played either one team attacking and the other defending or the other way around. We haven't seen a lot of battles for the ball in midfield. No, not really. It's been, like you said, on one side of the field or the other. And just for me, from, from what I'm seeing right now, it just seems like Miami was really pressuring Ohio 
right this there. one forward for Townsend. She's on goal. The shot off the post and cleared by Miami. What a chance for Abby Townsend through the back line of Miami. Rebound looked like it might have been there for Lecky, but it was just cleared by Lauren Albrecht. And now Ohio will have a chance for the corner kick once they decide who's going to take it. No one stepping up at this point. It appears it'll be Abby Townsend. And just as I was saying that Miami was keeping the pressure on, now here come the Bobcats. They're pressuring now. They drove the field and just off the post. Unfortunate result, but a good show of life from Ohio. Townsend a good cross. The header is off the back post. Good save by Patricia Katulis. Nick Katulis just kind of tapping that ball up and then diving out using her body to secure the ball and making the catch. Great show of athleticism from her. Roberts gets it forward. Medancic down the left side. She's been dangerous so far today. Let's see what she does here. The cross in the middle, but no Red Hawk there to get it. And it'll be Sydney Lecky to take it for Ohio. Lucky forward for Townsend. This is Reese. Cross the middle for Arnzen. Arnzen now to Sensky. Back for the Kentucky native, Maddie Arnzen. Ohio having some trouble getting forward in this one. That ball for Molesky just a little bit too long, and now the Red Hawks take control. This is the substitute Spinell. Now it's Phelan, and her ball for Spinell is just too long. Throw for the Cats. See here if the Bobcats can get back in a little groove as they're now on Miami's side. The ball from Townsend to Leckie was battled for, but it'll be off Ohio in the end. That one rolling down the street outside, and a car had to slow down and swerve out of the way so as to not run over that <laughs> soccer ball. you got to keep aware of whatever's going on outside of this playing field. The ball forward for Bogdanovich is not good enough, but Miami keeps control, and they're going to try for a long throw. But it's Rocky there to defend. Thirty minutes left to play in this first half. Zeros on the board for both the Ohio Bobcats and the Miami Red Hawks in the soccer edition of the Battle of the Bricks. Forward for Bogdanovich. She's in a lot of space, but she's offside. Really good awareness from Breeden there as Victoria's kind of saying, hey, offsides as she's running back. And luckily the line judge saw that. Yeah, Breeden took a couple steps forward before that defense. I'm not sure she knew exactly where Bogdanovich was. But in the end, those couple steps forward proved to be crucial as that played the offside trap and got the ball back for Ohio. That would have been the best chance all day if Bogdanovich was onside. Now Ohio with a good chance here. This is Leckie crossed the middle for K. And goalkeeper comes out, but they say it's off of Matty K. It'll be a goal kick for Patricia Katulis. Now Ohio getting in a substitution. It's Taylor Dickerson, the Cincinnati native, the defender. Freshman who has only come in as a sub so far this year. Her eighth appearance, but zero starts. And she's in there immediately with a head to the ball. 
This is Townsend down the left side. She is slid into. They'll play advantage, but it'll be a goal kick for Miami. A lot of contact there on the sliding tackle into Abby Townsend, but the referee said it was fair. Yeah, said it was fair. I mean, we haven't seen any cards given out yet today, and you know they're going to let it play. Honestly, Connor, I'm a little bit surprised by that fact. Miami is a very aggressive team so far this season. 103 fouls for them in their previous nine games. Six yellow cards and a red card for Miami. Meanwhile, for Ohio, just three yellow cards all season and no reds. Miami's opponents commit almost exactly half the fouls they do. And there's a, they are screaming for a foul in the box as Abby Townsend was knocked down from behind. The referee waves it off though, no penalty here. Well, this would be a true battle of the bricks. Yeah, it seems Just as so. we're saying it. Just as we're talking about fouls and penalties, one was not called right there, but you can tell this game's gonna get aggressive real fast. Yeah, the ref's mindset today seems to be letting them play. We've seen a few plays in here where there's been some hard contact, but nothing called. That one looked particularly egregious, Connor. Everyone in the stands was shouting for a penalty. I think even the, some of the Miami fans were a little bit worried there. Yeah, a little bit worried, but I mean, it's not football. You know, we're not seeing any flags being thrown out onto the field or no yellow cards being pulled out yet. Now I'm in a little bit of trouble, but she gets it away. Rocky and Reese. A couple passes between them. Now Reese will try and charge forward. Squares it to Kalika. Forward ball flicked on for Townsend. Townsend charging down the left side, taking on Faces. Puts it in. The header sits at the feet of Kay, but Kay is offside. Maleski, Alyssa Maleski, or excuse me, Olivia Maleski with a very good flick on with the head. Fell to the feet of Kay, but apparently the Medina, Ohio native was offside. First offsides for Ohio today. We've seen a few for Miami. And now they're charging forward. Olivia Winnett squares the ball to the right side. A lot of contact there. It'll end up being a corner kick for the Red Hawks. Miami corner kick. Ohio has coped well with corners so far today. And it'll be Jordan King once again to take it for Miami. Ohio going with that same defensive scheme. Three players in goal with one defender on each post and then of course the goalkeeper right in the middle. And then every other player save for one in the box. Good cross in but it's headed out by Breeden. Only so far as Medancic, but Ohio controls. And Maddie Kay does a great job to keep control for the Bobcats. Abby Townsend was in a lot of space down the middle, but the pass just couldn't get there from Victoria Breeden. And Breeden now, this would be her third straight start this season, has appeared in all nine games, but now she's starting to start in you know, her defense is a big reason why. That ball over the head of Bogdanovich. And Ohio will retake control. Reese again down the left side. Dickerson is forward and that's who will receive the ball here. Now it's Townsend. Townsend closed down and dispossessed. It'll be Ohio ball on the throw. Twenty-three minutes left to play in this half. Still a scoreless ball game. Miami has not attempted a shot on goal so far today. Breeden down the right side. Now Kay turns around her defender. Now finds some space down the middle. Long shot. Katulis with the jump save. 
Catullus really looking good here in this first half. She's been almost everywhere for the Red Hawks inside that box. That shot came from Maria Kalika, the grad transfer defender who spent her undergraduate soccer career at Butler in Indiana. That's Kalika's sixth shot of the season, fourth on goal, which is the most out of all Ohio defenders for both of those categories. So Kalika more than willing to drive forward and assist with that Ohio attack, even though she's got defender as her position title. That obviously does not constrain her play on the field. She's definitely playing as more of a defensive mid today than a true defender. Ohio kind of loading the score sheet with defenders so far today. As I mentioned, they started six defenders and ended up subbing one in when they took off Sidney Leckie. So there are t technically, Connor Mills, seven true defenders on the field right now, but two or three of them playing as midfielders pretty consistently. Kalika, one of them. Dickerson, another. And the defense has looked good from Ohio. Again, there's been no shots on goal from the Red Hawks, so they're doing something right. I think one of those things that they're doing right is playing that offside trap. We've seen Miami called for offside three times. Ohio keeping a very organized back line, making sure that Miami can't charge forward. Here they've got a free kick from a decent position on the right side. Swinging cross comes in and they'll call a foul on Miami in a tussle. Malum will take the free kick for the Bobcats. Brianna Reese will start this attack. And Bogdanovich fighting with Rocky. Bogdanovich has the ball in the area. Now looking for support. Finds some from Medancic. The shot takes a deflection. Down the left side. This is Wynette. Wynette looking to the middle. Played in by Medancic. And now Ohio's finally able to clear. But that was a very tense defensive situation for the Bobcats. And they eventually got rid of the ball from their defensive area. But you've been talking about it all day, Connor, about how this Ohio defense is organized and effective. And it looked a little bit frantic there for a while, but eventually they were able to get the job done. Absolutely they were able to get the job done. I mean, ball's midfield right now. No damage has been done so far. They did get two shots off, but no score on the board. Now Ohio trying to build up their attack from the back. This is Arnzen. Now Kay. Sensky charging up the middle. And she won't be able to keep control. Maddie Kay loses it too and is tripped up. No call. Wynette will charge down the middle. Miami sending numbers forward, but Ohio has plenty of numbers back. Now to the right side. It'll be Reese to cut things off and start the attack again for the Bobcats. Dickerson battling with Phelan. And that ball goes through the legs of a Miami defender. Reese down the left side. What can she do with this one? Tries to square it for Kay. Instead, Catullus will come out of her goal and dive to control things for the Red Hawks. That was some real good ball handling from Dickerson there on the far side of the field on midfield just to give Ohio the opportunity to drive down and try to get a goal. Well, where Miami, or I should say where Ohio is strong in their defensive organization, Miami has had a couple lapses today. We've seen multiple occasions where the Bobcats have been able to get past that back line and charge past that defense. Santa Catarina comes into this game as Olivia Sensky comes off. Also a substitution for Miami. It's Tori Christiansen. Into this game. Miami charging forward through Wynette. Finds some space in the middle, but it's quickly cut off by Arnzen. Rocky covers for a quick slip by Reese. 
Santa Catarina, her first touch of the game, flicks it on for Molesky. Now Molesky forward for Kay. Kay is in space down the right side. She is all alone. Now crosses in front of her the shot with the left foot, and it's blocked. A last second defensive block by Jordan King. Kay with some incredible ball handling to shake the one defender that was on her. And, and for, Ohio and for earns a corner now. And for Kay, when she was lining up that shot, didn't know how she was going to go with her opposite foot, the non-dominant foot, her left. And then just wasn't strong enough to get past, but really good defense from King and the Red Hawks. Townsend for the corner. Whips it in. The head from Kay is way too high. And we've got another Ohio substitution. It'll be Serena Dierig, the sophomore from Powell, as Olivia Molesky comes off. Well, and it also kind of seems like Catullus is a little confused. Nobody was giving her a ball anywhere as that one went outside of Chessa Fields. She was kind of looking around like, hey, I need a ball over here. Yeah, those things happen. There's not a lot of <laughs> out of play area here at Chessa. And the fences aren't particularly tall. So quite often you see balls fly on to Stewart Street and beyond. Well, it almost seems like the, the goal is really is, is taller than the fences. Right, it is. And of course, not every soccer player is exactly precise as to where they hit the ball as much as they try to be. You're going to have shots fly way over the goal. Happens at every level of the game. And the fences just are not equipped to keep those kind of shots in the yard. They could maybe go with one of those baseball, like, overreaching nets that they've kind of implemented in those stadiums to keep the foul balls from hurting anybody on the signs. Again, you're going to see a massive soccer ball when it goes towards you. But a baseball, you could lose that a little bit. Yeah, you're right, but luckily there's not, you know, spectators on the other side of the fences. Very true. For the spectators that are in attendance, and there's a pretty good crowd on hand today, there's absolutely nothing protecting them from the ball. They are right up against the sideline on the near side here at Chessa. And another ball flies up. Thought it was about to hit over the fence and onto the street across but it stays in the yard. 15 minutes left to play in this first half, still scoreless. Miami trying to charge forward. Malum will come out of her goal to collect that one. Malum rolls it softly to Mandy Arnzen. Good forward ball for the Red Hawks, but nobody there to claim it. Medancic was somewhat in the area, but Breeden had her by far. And now see a couple more subs. Hugelin comes into the game, as does Bryce Huber. Abby Townsend and Maddie Kay out of the game for Ohio. Huber has played in every single game, as has Huglin. No surprise to see them on the pitch now. Miami throw, but before that, a Miami sub. It'll be Medancic to come out of the game. She has been a huge threat down that left side, a real thorn in the side of the Bobcats so far today. Medancic has created a lot of chances She'll get a well-deserved rest. Meanwhile, Tyler Klicka comes into the game for the Red Hawks in her stead. And Klicka immediately involved. And she gets it forward. This is Wynette. Wynette back to Klicka. Klicka crosses it to the middle. Rocky there. Dangerous position for Desiree Grubbs. Shot deflected and picked up by Malum charging out of the box and just beating the Miami attacker there. 
Mavallon was in a difficult position because that ball, it was bouncing high. She had to jump a little bit to go over her head, but then she also had to charge it too because Miami was right in the area. Misplayed pass, and now Bogdanovich has the ball in the goal. No penalty called as there's a lot of contact right on the edge of the area, and Ohio finally able to clear. Bogdanovich was the first one up to claim that ball, and she looked to be in a lot of space, but it was Mandy Arnzen that stepped up and cleared it for Ohio, but now Winnett in space at the edge of the area. Malum gets there beforehand, slides in, makes the play. Malum looking for a foul called, but nothing of the sort. She comes up with the ball, which is really the most important thing. Sure, she would have liked to see a foul called, but even so, she maintained possession for the Cats. Deering to the right side for Breeden. Hugelin coming on in support, but Breeden doesn't want that. Deering fighting for possession, and Breeden keeps it. The other thing I've noticed about Breeden, she's very patient. She waits for the play to develop in front of her. She takes her shots when possible, but she analyzes the field and, and tries to get the best thing going for her. She puts a high ball into the area there. No trouble for Patricia Katulis. No Bobcats there in support. Right side, Miami charging down. But Rocky cuts that one out. And Reese with a good play to keep Ohio in possession. Now it'll be Reese down the left side. Deering toward the middle. Back to Reese. And she plays that one forward. But the run of Hugelin was going the other way. A little bit of miscommunication from the Bobcats gives Miami the ball back. Right around 11 minutes to play here at Chessa Field. Still no score from either side. I think it's fair to say that the Bobcats have had the better chances today, Connor. Absolutely, they've had the better chances. I mean, one shot just bounced off one of the sides of the, of the post. And uh, they've been playing most of the game now going on to Miami's side. Here Miami's charging forward. That ball goes through the legs of the substitute Klicka. And Ohio is able to regain control, but not for long. Left side, Bob Dinovich chasing that one down. She'll get there before Ohio does. Tries to go through the legs of Santa Catarina, and Sa Santa Catarina's fouled. Ohio gets the ball back. Infraction on Lida Bogdanovich. Mandy Arnzen to take the free kick. Deep in Ohio's territory. It's flung forward. Deerig controls it. Played forward for Deerig again but she can't run that one down. It's Jordan King who has been a menace in defense so far today for the Cats, or excuse me, for the Red Hawks. Good ball played forward by Hugelin there. Deerig just in an offside position, couldn't get back in play. Now just couldn't get back, little late getting up. Doesn't hurt the Bobcats all too much, though. This is Dickerson. Dickerson finds some space, but now Miami gets the ball back and promptly gives it right back to the Bobcats. Yeah, just a little bit too hard on the touch, a little you know, forward. Uh, so again, it's a Red Hawk. She finds a Bobcat. That's what we've been seeing a lot of today, Connor Mills. More from the Red Hawks than the Bobcats, but just a lot of misplayed passes. There's not the right channels of communication opening up so far today. And another misplayed pass there over the head of Taylor Dickerson will give Miami the ball back. It's just, it's things like that. Exactly. I was going to mention just everything seems to be going far. You know, the Bobcats, they'll be a little bit shorter than where the ball that they're kicking are. And same thing goes for Miami. Substitutions for both sides as Grace Johnson comes into this game, the freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan for Miami. And two substitutions for Ohio, Paige Knorr and Courtney Dagardas. Both attacking players into this game and Dagardas right away in control, and she passes to fellow substitute Knorr. 
Brianna Reese, who has played every minute of this game so far, forward for Dierig. Dierig looking for control. Squares it back to Arnzen, who has to run a little bit to her right, but she keeps control. Santa Catarina forward, but too far forward for the run of Dagradas. But no worries, Ohio gets the ball right back after Catullus' kick is out of play. And again, just another kick that's overshooting her intended target. Seven and a half minutes to play. Scoreless game here at Chesterfield between the bitter rivals Miami and Ohio. It's been a back and forth game. No team has really gotten that open chance so far. If there's one chance that sticks with me, Connor, it's the shot from Sydney Leckie that went off the post. And then another one from Maddie Kay, which was just a last second block from Jordan King. But the two best chances in this game have both come for Ohio. That's not to say that Miami isn't charging forward and opening up chances for themselves. It's just that it seems like Ohio's back line is a little bit more organized. That's what's giving them the upper hand so far in this one. And maybe that's what Ohio's coach Aaron Rodgers was intending for this game when he set up that lineup. Yeah, he we said around seven defensive. There were six to start the game and at one point seven defenders in this game at the same time. Attempt from Miami saved by Malum. No trouble for the Nashville sophomore. Bogdanovich forward for Winnett. And Winnett's offside. I saw that one, Connor. It looked like she was just a shoulder in front of the Ohio defender, just trying to create that little bit of space. But she went too early. Well, if it's a shoulder or a toe, it doesn't matter. If you're in front of that line, they're going to call it. This is Huber trying to control. Now Reese back to Huber. The ball forward is in no man's land, and it'll be Cthulhu's to come out and get it. She plays it with her feet, and now she'll pick it up as the challenge from Dierig comes in. Not a bad idea from Dierig trying to surprise Cthulhu's and try to catch her off guard. Paige Noor trying to control. Hugelin now. Nor puts this one forward, but it's deflected on its way to Deerig. And Miami will have it now. This is Dagradis. The header is in no man's land. Miami reclaims it. Now forward for Ohio. This just looks to be pinballing back and forth at this point, Connor. It looks to be pinballing, and now his time is under five minutes in the first half. It seems like Ohio, they're trying for that goal. They're trying to be more aggressive. They're running up on the ball. They're just trying to find ways to open up a scoring opportunity. Hugelin controls, now lays off to Reese. But I think you're right in that most, or excuse me, both of these teams are kind of frantically trying for a goal at halftime at this point. Ohio has struggled in getting first half goals this season. This is Bogdanovich forward for Winnett. Winnett is offside. She was in a lot of space, but it's been that time and time again where Ohio is catching Miami offside. Under four minutes to play now in the first half. No score for either side. Four shots on goal for the Bobcats. Only one for Miami. Both teams have earned four corner kicks in this game. Yeah, those offsides, they're really killing Miami. Five of them now. Santa Catarina heads this one. Rocky kicks it forward for Deerig, and it's bouncing around. Winnett controls for Miami. And now they'll try to get the attack started through the left side. But that one is cut out by Mandy Arnzen. Deflected ball, finds the middle of the pitch. 
This is Bogdanovich. Long shot attempt, it looked like, blocked by Arnzen. Klicka plays it forward. Ohio again into clear. That's Mandy Arnzen once more. Down the left side, this is Spinell. Out to collect is Malum. A very good jumping catch from her. Keeps it in Ohio's control. Two and a half minutes to play. Well, Malum recognized the threat and said, hey, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. Just takes the ball herself. Miami was certainly sending a lot of numbers forward there, Connor. And they're trying to do it again, but it's an infraction from Tyler Klicka. Ohio gets the ball. Two minutes to see if they can find that first goal strike before the half ends, or we might be heading into halftime scoreless. Arns in again for the kick. She'll go short to Breeden. Santa Catarina in the middle. It's cut out by Bogdanovich, and Miami might be in business here, but Bogdanovich plays it too long for herself, and Arnzen is able to jump in. Arnzen has just been immense in defense today for Ohio. And now it's played forward for Daugertis. Can she win this one against Albrecht? No, Albrecht will get there first, but Daugertis has it now. Left-footed shot saved. So close for Ohio. Another opposite-footed shot, non-dominant foot shot, whatever you want to call it. But Ohio, I mean, they've gotten the best looks today. That one was a little bit of luck from Daugertis, as she did not win the foot race with Albrecht, but Lauren Albrecht just couldn't control the ball for the Red Hawks, gave it right back to Daugertis. And she made the most of it. Played it across her body, put it on her left foot, hit a strong shot. Is just basically right at Catullus, and that's been Ohio's struggles today, finding those spots in goal where Catullus can't reach. That's the one thing that they still need. We're down under a minute, 45 seconds left, in fact, in this ball game, or rather, in this first half. Bryce Huber controls down the left side, plays it into the middle, maybe one last offensive chance for Ohio. They earn a free kick here. Down under 30 seconds. It'll be Rihanna Reese as Ohio sends numbers forward. Thirteen seconds to play and Reese kicks it in. Finds Hugelin. Hugelin down the left side with less than 10 to play. A cross in, deflected, and the clock will run out. It's a scoreless first half, Ohio 0, Miami 0, after 45 minutes here at the Battle of the Bricks. Neither team able to break through. Ohio has had strong offensive chances so far today. But they are unable to capitalize on any of their five shots on goal. Meanwhile, they've done a good job in defense, holding Miami to just one shot on goal. It's been a little bit frantic at times for both sides, but... Overall, the teams have been able to hang on, get themselves organized, and not allow either side to score. 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. We'll take a break here on Ohio Bobcat TV. Don't go anywhere. Connor Mills and I will be back after halftime. You're listening, or you're tuned in to Bobcat TV.
Right? And so it's just like a really good thing. But so I mean, yeah, that, that's the whole point of the Bible, right? Is that like it's a book that you can read and you can learn from and you can love it and you can have fun with it. Right? And so we're, we want to just keep the Bible as our treasure trove. And so I did not write this down, but I put down that it's like our daily treasure trove. <laughs> you think you wrote that down? Did I? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but no, I think that's the Bible. Second half is underway here at Chesapeake Field as the Bobcats and the Red Hawks are tied at zero. Ohio gets things started here in the second and they're going to try to attack here through Molesky. Molesky's shot is high. Less than 15 seconds in, Connor Mills. And we're already seeing a good attempt by Ohio. They were just charging straight forward through that Miami back line and just too high of a shot from Molesky. She was not in the most ideal of positions, just a bit to the left of the goal, trying to cross her body and take that shot, but she was unable to do so. Now Miami will get their first attempts of this second half, but that'll be quickly put to bed as Michelle Rocky comes out to defend it, and she will take this Ohio throw as well. The Bobcats in the first half definitely had the better offensive chances. And now, here in the second, it's much the same through the first minute, I should say. But so far, the Bobcats seem to be picking up right where they left off, pushing forward, getting good chances. Now the question is, will they be able to finish one of those chances and get on the board? Breeden, a key piece of that defensive line so far today for the Cats. Takes this throw in, and now she'll take one again. Molesky controls. Now Breeden. Molesky tries to play it forward, but there's nobody there. And Miami clears that one on to Schaefer Street. And now they will wait around as they try to find a game ball for Ohio to throw in. We were talking early on in the first half, Connor, about how the, the balls like to fly out of this park. Fences are very close to the sidelines and not tall enough to keep the balls in play. No, I mean, if you really wanted to, you can just kick it out of here all day long. You could be at midfield and just, you know, take aim and try to, you know, practice your strength, I guess. Cats have an early corner kick, their third of the game, first of the half. It'll be Townsend again to take it. She took the first two in the first half. Looks like she might be playing this one short as Maddie Kay is in the area with her. Yep, they play it to Kay. Okay, trying to charge forward toward the penalty area. Now slips it back to Townsend. This is Lecky. Across the middle for Molesky. The shot is wide. Just wide by Molesky. Olivia Molesky trying to head that one toward goal. It looked good. It was maybe a little bit weak, but certainly too far wide to the right side. That's really just been the story for Ohio so far to this point. Get a couple good looks, a couple good shots on goal, and just nothing's going in for him. 
But now here's Winnett. She's been a key piece of that Miami attack. And now she keeps it alive with the ball down the left side for Medancic. Cross to the middle. And a save by Malum. A crucial save. DeMarco with a great attempt, very close to goal, and a point blank save for Sydney Malum to keep this game scoreless. Already more action here within two, three minutes than we've seen in the first half, so this should be an exciting second half and yeah, finish to this one. You're right, we've seen a lot of good offensive chances for both sides. Now maybe one here, although Lucky doesn't look like she's gonna win this foot race. She does not, Miami clears out of bounds. Dangerous position though, and Townsend will try to get things going for the Cats. Cross flicked in, deflected, and Catullus able to claim it, but it went out of play, and it will be an Ohio corner. So you can hear Miami not really too happy about that. I think actually what they're more concerned with is the fact that Catullus booted that one so far away from the Ohio player they want that as a time-wasting infraction, and that's what the referee and Patricia Catullus were just chatting about there. Second corner kick of the half for the Bobcats. It's whipped in. The header is deflected by Miami. Maddie Kay will control for the Cats. Turn it around, but she is quickly stripped. And here comes Wynette. Looking for Medancic down the left side. Instead, it'll find Rocky. A dangerous header by Maddie Kay, but she keeps with it. And Ohio will have the ball on that right side. Coming toward the middle, quick shot by Maleski, but it's quickly deflected. Breeden keeps it in play. Now Townsend controls and gives it right back to Miami. That's just what Breeden's been doing all day, whether it's on offense or defense. She's just been finding her way to impose her will on whoever's standing in front of her. This is Molesky with a good challenge, now has the ball. Excuse me, that was Maria Kalika that came down with it. She played it forward to Molesky, and Molesky ended up booting it out of play. Seven minutes gone in the second half. 38 to play. Molesky plays this one forward for Townsend, and it looks like Townsend's gonna chase it down, push it toward the area, and it'll go out of play for an Ohio throw. This is Maddie Kay, working around defenders on the right side. She comes up with it, she's in the area, looking for support, and it's eventually cut out only so far as Townsend. Breeden whips one in, deflected. Good defense by Medancic. Ohio attacking down that right wing. That's where we've seen them most of this half so far. Seemed like last half they were using a pretty balanced attack going between both lateral sides of play. For the first eight minutes of this half, though, they've been pretty consistently attacking down the right wing using the same weapons, Breeden, Molesky, Kalika, K. This is Townsend, and it trickles out of play. It'll be a goal kick for Miami. Just not a throw that Townsend could handle right there. Is now the Red Hawks will get the ball. Yeah, Townsend just needed a little bit more control with that one. I think it hit off the wrong side of her foot. Here's Kay. Forward for Molesky. Sensky comes forward and they'll call a foul on Olivia Molesky for an infraction further back. Catullus will come well off her line to take this free kick. Miami 
Whitney trying to charge forward and strike first in this game. Long boot from Catullus, and it will be controlled by Ohio. Molesky heads that one forward, but there's nobody in the area of the ball. After a big boot from Catullus, Breeden lets it go out of play. And Ohio will try again. Molesky down the middle, plays it forward for Townsend. Townsend races against King, but the Red Hawk, Jordan King, wins it. And now it looks like the Bobcats will try to attack down the left wing, which is something we haven't seen from them this half. Reese squares it back to the center. And Bogdanovich has control. Here comes Roberts for Miami. Good deflection by Sensky, and now it's Sidney Leckie that picks up the pieces. Just really good ball moving from Ohio here, and nice passes to all their teammates. Doing a nice job defending there, half the field. Breeden keeps it in down the right side, but that one will trickle past the end line, and it'll be another goal kick for Miami. Ten minutes gone in the second half, 35 to play in this game, still scoreless. And while Ohio has had the better chances, chances don't go on the score sheet. No, they do not. Goals and record do. <laughs> right now, neither side has any goals. Well, of course, assists do, but you, you kind of need a goal for an assist to happen, right? Yeah, I'd say so. You have yep. shots on goals. You have other you know, stats you can record. There are plenty of statistics, but ultimately what goes down <laughs> in the record book is the number of goals you scored compared to what your opponent did. And, you know, you could have a 1,000 chances and your opponent could have one, but if you convert zero of your chances and your opponent converts their one, you lost the game. Absolutely. So it's definitely anybody's ball game. While Ohio has had the stronger offensive chances, Miami has certainly had the opportunities. Andy Clay plays this one forward, looking for Molesky, but it's cut out. Macy's cleaning up for the Red Hawks. Down the right wing now, it's Albrecht. Excuse me, it's the left wing. She tries to center it for DeMarco, but there's nothing there. And now here comes Reese. Sydney Leckie and Rihanna Reese combining on that left wing for the Cats. This is Molesky. Molesky plays it forward for Townsend. She's in a lot of space. She gets there first. She's one on one. Can she do it? She does! An incredible goal from Abby Townsend on a beautiful pass from Olivia Molesky. Townsend was in so much space there. And Ohio strikes first in the second half. 33-20 left to play. Ohio leads it one to nothing after the one-on-one -on -one goal from Abby Townsend. No, you're talking about all those chances. Finally, Ohio, they're able to capitalize on one of them. Ohio has the ball deep in their own territory. But now it'll be Miami on the throw. Tori Christensen has it. She plays short. This is Wynette. And Wynette can't make anything of it. Off the foot of an Ohio defender though, and it'll be a corner kick. Jordan King striding forward. King has taken every corner so far in this one. 
And it makes sense for her. She's played in every game, started nine of the ten games for Miami. The Elgin, Illinois midfielder in her freshman season already has four assists on the air. She swings this one in. It's a good ball. The header is out of play, or rather still in control of King. This time the swung ball is beyond the back post, and now it will be a goal kick for the Cats. Malum sets up for this goal kick. Ohio leads one to nothing. 31-30 left to play in the second half. See if the Bobcats can hold on or maybe even add on. On the right side for Breeden, but she can't haul it in. After a back and forth midfield battle, Ohio will have control down the right side. Throw in by Breeden, finds Kalika. K controls, plays forward. Townsend looking for it. She can't come up with it though. Now to the midfield, DeMarco has it, finds Bogdanovich. DeMarco again, Miami looks dangerous here. And this is Wynette. Wynette trying to cross in front of Reese, but Reese does a good job, sticks her legs out and controls for the Cats. Now let's see if Ohio can capitalize. Kay runs into the brick wall of Desiree Grubbs. Now Miami controlling through Wynette. Right side for DeMarco. DeMarco fighting against Rihanna Reese and comes up with it. Back to the middle for Wynette. This is Macis. Cut out by Reese. Great defensive effort. And the Cats have it now. Well, Reese just recognized the play, knew that the ball was going to be coming right close to her and steps up, makes a defensive play. Now Bobcats are back in action. Molesky's forward ball is just a bit too forward for Townsend that time. Deep kick by Catullus, and it looks like Miami had a good chance there, but stepping up again was Mandy Arnzen. She has been an absolute key piece to that back line, just rock solid, the senior from Edgewood, Kentucky. Arnzen has played in every single game all season long, or excuse me, each of her four seasons here. She started every game last year. That was just impressive. And she has started every single game this year as well, Connor Mills. And she has played most of the minutes of most of the games. I She was not subbed out in the first half. It surprised me to see her subbed out here. She is just so rock solid in defense for the Bobcats. That one from Rocky is through the legs of Townsend and too long for Lecky. Catullus plays this one long down the left side. Having to give it chase is Albrecht. She finds it. To the middle for Grubbs. This is Wynette. Back to Grubbs. That one forward looking for Bogdanovich, but it's Arnzen that taps it out. Miami regains it, though. And Victoria Breeden, a great stop from her. 
Bobcats have it again. This one forward from Aleski. Can she get there? Looks like she might be in control, but sliding in and taking the ball is Patricia Katulis. A lot of contact there between Maleski, Macis, and Katulis. Looks like everybody's back on their feet and doing all right, however. Breeden finding some space in the middle. Looking for Maleski now. Forward for Townsend. Townsend down the right side. The goal scorer today finds some room, crosses it in. Katulis controls for the Red Hawks. Townsend couldn't bend that ball just enough to try to go around Katulis. But it was a good shot attempt. Adancic in some space down the left wing. Cuts it across her body, looks for space in the middle, looking for support. She finds DeMarco, but Rihanna Reese cuts it out first. Kalika, right side for Kay. Back to Breeden. Kalika once more. Molesky giving this one chase, and she will not get there in front of the Miami defender. Good play by Chloe Macis to keep that one out of the control of Olivia Molesky, who already has one assist on the day. Makes it two on the season for Molesky to go along with her two goals. One of the most threatening attacking players for the Bobcats so far this season. She's already matched her previous season totals last year in 19 games. She had two goals and two assists this year in 10 games. Two goals, two assists for Molesky. And then, of course, that assist just coming earlier, minutes earlier. It's Bobcats now lead 1-0. Molesky has been a crucial part of a couple games. She had the game-winning goal against Eastern Michigan in that 2-1 victory last Sunday. And so far today, she very well might get the game-winning assist. That's the way it currently stands. She assisted the only goal for the Cats. And they currently lead it one to nothing, just like you said, Connor. Controlling is Bogdanovic. She lays it off for Medancic. Medancic tries to square to the middle, but it's cut off. Breeden there. Dangerous challenge from Mandy Arnzen. And now Miami will get a free kick. About 40 yards out. Ohio sets up a three-man wall. Or I should say three-woman wall. Looping cross comes in. And Miami unable to do anything with it. The player closest to it was Bianca Medan Medancic, excuse me. Yeah, that ball took a funky bounce on Medancic when she went up to try to kick it on the bounce, just went right over her leg. Even if she had made contact, it would have been very difficult for her to play it into the goal. It was an obtuse angle on that right side. Santa Catarina checks back in for the Bobcats, their first sub of the half. Reese with the throw, gets it back immediately. Haven't seen a lot from Olivia Sensky, but she controls there. Gives it back to Reese, and Reese gives the ball to Chloe Macis of Miami. This ball played forward. It looks like Arnzen will get there first, and she does. Now Bogdanovich 
dangerous ball for Winnett, but Arnzen cut it out. Now the shot is saved. Sydney Mallon has no trouble with that one. Well, for Mallon, she hasn't really seen a lot of action today, not nearly as much as Katorsik, or Katulis, excuse me. And here come the Cats once again. Maddie Kay fighting around. Looked like she was tripped up. Defender, or excuse me, the referee says no foul. And Miami gets control of the ball back. It was a three-on-three -three situation for the Cats with Kay Molesky and Townsend all charging forward. Kay looking to win her personal one-on-one -on -one battle there. Just couldn't quite get the timing right. Miami flips the field, playing down the right wing now. Here's Wynette. And now they'll look long down the right side. They're in space in the area. Left-footed cross is out of play. And again, like we were talking about in the first half, these kicks are just a little bit too hard, too high, and too outside of where their intended target's supposed to go. That was Soph Spinell, the Barrington, Illinois native that just could not find a teammate. Last season, she led Miami in assists. She had three all season long. She's a sophomore, and during her freshman season, she made her collegiate debut against the Ohio Bobcats in what would turn out to be a 0-0 two-overtime draw in Oxford. Well, on this one, impossible to be 0-0. It looked like it was going to be that way for a while, though, Connor. Neither team could convert on their chances or really get good enough looks at goal. Not on the Red Hawks. They were getting lucky. A couple shots, like I said, went off the post, came close to scoring just a little outside, and you now finally for Ohio, Abby Townsend was able to find the net. Less than 20 minutes to play here at Chesterfield, Ohio, with a 1-0 lead. But Miami threatening here across in. Good defending by Mandy Arnzen. Chance still there, but it's cleared away. Sliding tackle from Victoria Breeden. Breeden and Arnzen have just been immense on that back line today. Yes, they have. Breeden, you know, again, she's been pacing Arnz. She's been all over the field and, and really locked down defense from those two. Miami still threatening, but a good block there by Santa Catarina. Or excuse me, that was Maria Colica. Miami, they're probably starting to get a little worried now, Connor Mills. They trail by a goal. They've had their chances. They just have not been able to capitalize too much. They've been caught offside a lot today. And that, that combination has really been plaguing them. Five times they've been caught offside. Well, five oh. times offside, and you know, they're getting outshot. Ohio with 11 shots. Miami right now, they've got six. Only three of them are on goal. And Malin hasn't. Of, yeah, not a lot of opportunities for the Red Hawks to score. And every time that they have put one on goal, it's been pretty easy for Malin. She has not been overworked today. One impressive point blank save for her is the one thing that stands out, but it was hit right at her. She did not have to move to make that save. And sometimes those plays are the hardest to make because you don't know, are they going to try to fake me left? Are they going to try to go right? Are they going to go over my head? Looked like a good chance for Medancic, but she just couldn't control it. And now she's finding to keep the ball in play. Good cross in. Right side, Spinell looks to keep it in, but she can't. They say it goes off an Ohio defender, and it'll be a corner kick for the Red Hawks. Jordan King once again to take it. Ohio 
Ohio with every single player back in the penalty area for defense. Miami unable to connect meaningfully with that, and now Townsend trying to drive down the left side for a counterattack for the Bobcats. She squares the middle, but it's just too long for Molesky. Good idea from Townsend. Senski gets the ball back. Now Senski driving down the left wing. Molesky in support, but she'll flip the field to Maddie Kay. It's just cut out. Good defensive play by Lauren Albrecht. Looked like Ohio had a promising chance for a counterattack there. Just couldn't do it. Yeah, a lot of energy, a lot of momentum going Ohio's way. Just couldn't maintain possession of the ball. 16 minutes, 30 seconds left for Miami to try and tie this ball game up. It's one to nothing in favor of your Ohio Bobcats. Right footed cross swung in by Spinell. Frantic defending by Ohio. Kalika throws herself at the ball there to make sure that no shot is able to get off. Now a shot, but it's left of goal. Malum lets it go out of play and she'll take a goal kick. We'll see two subs. Serena Dierig comes on for the Cats. Actually, three subs. Serena Dierig, Macy Hugelin, and I can't quite read that number. That's a two-digit number out there. Possibly 18. Yeah, Sydney Leckie checks back in for the Bobcats. They should give us binoculars up here. They absolutely should, Connor. <laughs> Just hard for me to read all the way across the field. Miami now attacking through Wynette. Deerig with her first touch of the half. Looking for Sensky but couldn't find her. Reese foot races with Spinell. And the Bobcats keep control. But only so far is Jordan King. King with a right footed cross into the area. But it gets to Malum before Bogdanovich could get there. Actually, excuse me, that was Wynette charging in. And for Malum, a good read on the ball. Knew she could take it on a hop and had to go quick because the Red Hawk was right in the area. Another good save for Malum. Now she has been pretty confident in goal so far today. She's only allowed seven goals so far this season in her six games. This is her seventh in goal for the Bobcats. 24 saves coming into the day. She has saved more than 75% of the shots that have come her way. Miami charging down the left side. Medancic fighting with Breeden. But it'll be Breeden that gets a touch and sends it clear. Miami now with a corner. King again to take it. Ohio sending all of their bodies back. Only one stands outside the penalty area. Miami with three players out of the box. Low cross defended well by Sidney Lecky. Another cross comes in. The header is wide. Roberts got up there. Got a strong head to it for the Red Hawks. Just couldn't find the goal. Two more subs for Ohio. Huber comes in in place of Abby Townsend. And Morgan Kalika is in the game for the first time. Deerig controls in the middle of the field for the Bobcats. And now Morgan Kalika getting her first touches of this game. Long boot for Malum, but not long enough as Miami is able to control. Only momentarily, 
as Morgan Colica now streaks down the middle of the field, finds Deerig, and the Bobcats are in quite a bit of space. That one forward for Huber, but just way too forward. Good, just a bit forward for Huber. It was a good idea from Serena Deerig. I think she just mishit the ball, or maybe didn't know her own strength. Catulus able to get out there and get the job done. This is Santa Catarina who cuts that one out, finds Deerig down the middle. And now down the right side, it'll be a Miami throw. 11 minutes and 40 seconds to play here at Chesapeake, Ohio, trying to hang on and get the win over their bitter rivals. They currently lead it one to nothing. Miami has been frantically searching for that equalizer, but the Ohio defense has held strong. This is Hugelin, now to Huber. Long shot from Huber, trying to catch Catullus off guard. No such luck. The Toronto goalkeeper is able to collect and send Miami back on their way. Down the right side for Miami is Christensen. Now to the middle for Grubbs. Sensky controls and will push it out of play for a Miami throw. Ohio will take the throw. They'll try to push forward through Bryce Huber. And it will briefly go out of play. Miami throw. One to nothing. The Bobcats in the lead over the Miami Red Hawks in the soccer edition of the Battle of the Bricks. We are now at 10 minutes to play in this one. Reese boots that one. Past the touchline. Miami corner kick. Jordan King once more. Looking to add to her assist totals. And looking to give Miami that equalizer that they've been so desperate, desperately searching for. Right footed cross is low. And a good boot from none other than Mandy Arnzen. Huber controls for the Bobcats. Plays it forward for Deerig. Deerig is in space down the middle. She's got support down the right side from Lecky, but she'll take it herself. Now plays to Lecky. Lecky streaking down. And it is there. Well, I was going to say, Connor Mills, I did not <laughs> think that shot went in. I'm not sure if you could, if you could tell from my voice, but <laughs> the crowd went wild. Well, it looked, it looked very nice. The, it, it hit the back of the net, but it hit the fence behind the net first. Yeah, I could have I could have sworn that that was not a goal, that that hit well wide to the right side. And I was, I, I, I thought my eyes were deceiving me there. Well, I mean, everybody got excited for it. The music got us all pumped up. and Reese's shot just well wide. Diving attempt by Catula. She could not come up with it. But no, the crowd was going absolutely nuts. The music was going. <laughs> the PA said, goal, Ohio. The scoreboard flashed up 2 nothing. And then shortly after, no, no, no goal, no goal. I, I didn't think so. I was so confused. It was, it's hard from my angle, and, and that's the same issue that the press box faced. It's, it's difficult to see exactly where the ball hits. And you could usually tell by the reaction of the other players, nobody was going crazy. Right. They probably enjoyed hearing the goal music play, but other than that, um, they know that wasn't a goal, and they know they have to bear down within these last eight minutes. Everybody else... Besides the 11 players on the pitch for Ohio, was going nuts. 
Seven minutes, 40 seconds to play. Ohio leads it one to nothing, in fact. Not two to nothing, as <laughs> false alarm may have had us believe. <laughs> they almost got you. They, they did. They did get me, Connor Mills. <laughs> I, was, I was thoroughly confused. Well, confusion is over now. We got it all pieced together. The no goal, that was almost... Miami trying to control the middle. It's King. Now played forward by Roberts, but Ohio controls down the right side. This is Dougherty's looking for Huber, but it's headed away. Dougherty's gets it back, but can't keep it. Sensky down the middle, plays it to the left. Hugelin looking for it. She will get there before it goes out of play. Now what's she going to do with it? Plays it forward for Reese on a low ball. Can Reese get there? Not in time. Cleared out of play by Chloe Maces. And we will see another Ohio substitution. Molesky comes back into the game. Sensky heads to the bench. Rihanna Reese controls down the left wing, plays it toward the middle. Molesky keeps it for Ohio. Now Miami trying to press forward down the left side. It's cut out again by Mandy Arnzen. Arnzen again playing that lockdown defense as she has been all game long will be a big reason should Ohio win this game. Dangerous looking position. Emily Roberts trying to keep control for Miami. Plays it forward. And this is Winnett blocked by Michelle Rocky. Miami keeps control through Soph Spinell down the right wing. And now it's cleared a little bit further back. This is King. Now Bogdanovich. Johnson, cut out. Good header there by Morgan Kalika to keep things in control for the Cats. Dangerous ball there, but Rihanna Reese mops it up and clears it deep. Albrecht will have to chase that one for Miami. And you can tell that these Red Hawks are anxious. They are so desperately trying to get that equalizing goal. A little bit over four minutes to play. Well, you can definitely tell they've got another, a renewed sense of urgency here under five. This is Roberts, but Morgan Kalika cuts it out. Now Bryce Huber plays it over for Molesky. Hugelin is in a lot of space down the left side. Molesky finds that. Now Hugelin plays it back. Molesky. Santa Catarina. Kalika. This is Kalika still. Now Dierig plays to the right side for Daugardis. And Ohio deposits it deep in Miami territory for the Red Hawks to try to charge forward. Three minutes, 20 seconds to play. Ohio clinging to a one to nothing lead. Miami, Miami desperately trying to attack. Well, Ohio, they're doing a good job playing keep away here. All they have to do, they don't need to score a goal. It would be nice to score a goal, get a little breathing room, but just keep the ball away from the Red Hawks, play their game right now, and just have it go on until you hear that buzzer. And I think what Ohio is really comfortable with right now is keeping control of the ball, but keeping it in Miami territory. If they 
you know, play it deep to themselves, that just opens up the opportunity for Miami to capitalize on a potential mistake. Right, you got to keep if, it on Miami's half of the field. Exactly. If a mistake is made there, Miami still has to cross the entire field to try and score a goal. But that's exactly what they're trying to do here. Soph Spinell will not win the foot race with Rihanna Reese, who boots it safely into the stands. Good hands play by a combination of fans here at Chesapeake. Unfortunately, not a souvenir you could take home. No, I don't think so. <laughs> two minutes to play here at Chesa Field. Two minutes. Two minutes. Lou Horvath reinforces that fact. Ohio leads one to nothing. Miami threatening here. This is Roberts. Roberts with some space. A deflected shot saved by Malum. Roberts, the attempt. Now you mentioned she had a pretty good play earlier on with the save, but this was her best save of the day. Yeah, certainly the most crucial, and the one where she had to do a little bit more work, interpreting that deflected ball, not an easy thing for a goalkeeper to do. You see a shot's trajectory, and then it suddenly changes. But she was able to keep with it the whole time. And now Ohio will try to attack. Coming down to a minute 15 in this game, Ohio just needs to hang on. They lead it one to nothing. And they'll take their time on this throw in. But we'll see a clock stoppage for this substitution. Two defenders sub in for Ohio Dickerson and Maria Kalika. Nothing wrong getting a couple fresh legs out there to close out this game. Minute left to go, and I. It's no surprise to see Ohio try to end this game just like they started it with a lot of defenders out there, especially when Miami is so frantically trying to attack. Molesky comes up with a crucial block to keep Miami from even entering their half. 35 seconds to play. Miami trying to keep control, and it'll be Wynette that does so, playing it forward for Spinell, but Reese is there. Morgan Colico, excuse me, Michelle Rocky with a good clearance. Molesky keeps it, or rather, Maria Colica keeps it for the Cats. Less than 20 seconds to play, now down to 15. And it will be extremely difficult for Miami to come back now that we're down to 10 seconds. It's out of play. Miami with a frantic throw in as we get down to 3, 2, 1. And that is the game, folks. Ohio wins this one, 1 to nothing. The crucial goal coming early on in the second half. It was Abby Townsend that had a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper, played it low and to the right. No chance for Catullus to make one of her trademark saves. Catullus was very good today, but ultimately she did allow that crucial goal. Should also mention the assist came from Olivia Molesky, her second of the season. Molesky played a beautiful pass that found Townsend in just oodles of space down the attacking half. That gave Ohio the goal and the win. Connor Mills, your thoughts? Well, I think this was a tremendously played game by Ohio. They played it smart. A lot of great defense from them, and they capitalized. They had a lot of opportunities to capitalize, but they were able to punch one through, and that's all they needed in the end. Abby Townsend, she did fantastic today. Scored her fourth goal in the season, leading the team in goals as a freshman. So a bright future ahead for her and bright skies ahead for these Bobcats. A one to nothing victory for the Bobcats in the soccer edition of the Battle of the Bricks. They get a crucial win over heated rival Miami. That's all for us here at Chesa Field. It's been a pleasure having you with us on this beautiful Friday afternoon. For Connor Mills, I'm Noah Wolf. Make sure to join us again Sunday as the Bobcats take on Ball State again here at Chesa Field. If you can't join us at Chesa, we will be streaming this once again on Bobcat TV. For Connor Mills, I'm Noah Wolf. Have a great rest of your weekend.